One of the mistakes that I made is I thought I wanted every single customer. I thought that every single person needed to be a client of Brian's Law Maintenance, and I realized that is not the case. Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. All right, today we're gonna talk about canceling customers the right way and the wrong way to do it. Let's check it out. All right, so what's going on guys? My name is Brian. I'm all about helping you guys grow a more successful lawn and landscape business so you guys can go out there and crush it. And we do that with vlogs, how to's, reviews, and sometimes we do that with thought process type videos or business mindset videos, I like to call it. Guys, these are just my personal story, uh, stories, personal examples. Hopefully they help you guys out. If you enjoy the video, shoot a big thumbs up by the time we're done and let's get into it. So you guys, I wanna talk about canceling customers. Usually it comes down to a couple different uh, situations or reasons that we wanna cancel customers. I got about six examples here that I wanna run through with you guys. Number one, usually it's talking about expectations expectations this is a reason to cancel customers or a reason customers cancel you expectations could be hey i'm getting a weekly cut for 35 dollars, and you know the customer is expecting a beautiful lawn or you're expecting to provide beautiful lawn service for your customer however things change. Let's just going to be honest. Sometimes there's a million toys in the yard. Sometimes you start off with a customer and it was just a wide open lawn that took you 20, 25 minutes to cut. And all of a sudden they have 16 oak trees in the back, tons of landscaping, tons of trimming. They have a pool. You need a second mower to go in that pool area to go cut. And quite honestly, the expectation is not the same. Most of the time, I'm going to say 40 or 50% of the time that I've had a situation where I need to cancel a customer, it's because the expectation level for either them or for me was not correct. We had some dissonance that wasn't working out and we had to let the, each other go or let the other one go. And so normally when you're trying to cancel or you have to cancel a customer, before you do, see if you can salvage it by usually having a conversation about expectations. To piggyback off of expectations, number two, the reason that we cancel customers quite often is the pricing. Sometimes pricing doesn't match what the customer wants to pay, is willing to pay, or needs to start paying because we have a price adjustment. For example, let's say you have a $35 or $40 cut. We go through that first example and now you gotta raise your rates five or $10 more per week. Sometimes customers just don't wanna pay that. I'm not saying that's right, I'm not saying that's wrong, but you know what? The one of the main reasons, the other 50% of the time I would say, is the pricing. Sometimes pricing doesn't add up for the customer or for you, and it just doesn't make sense anymore to keep them on. If you're not getting the price you want for a lawn, try to salvage that relationship first. But if you can't, have the conversation and let them go, because if they won't pay five or $10 more per week, Bye bye. Number three, why we sometimes cancel customers or sometimes why you guys might have to cancel customers is because of the scope of the work. We're not doing a certain type of work anymore and we just genuinely need to let those customers go. For example, uh, you might have customers where you do aerations for, but because you shrink your route or you're not offering that service anymore, hey, we no longer have aeration customers and we gotta let you go. And you know what? that's okay. Sometimes you just have to let customers know that you're not going to be doing that work anymore. And it's tough because we don't want to let that revenue go. We don't want to let that customer down. But you know what? There's times now where I've had customers where we've only done residential mulch for them, or we've only done an aeration for them. And they're outside of my service area. And we can no longer are interested in doing that work because we're more productive doing something else. And that's okay. That's 5% of the time. But you know what? Having those different uh, conversations about the scope of work we're doing, sometimes you might have to let customers know that your business's model has changed, your service offering has changed, and you're no longer able to do that work for them. Number four, which kind of piggybacks off of number three, which was the scope of work you're doing, is the route that you're doing that work in. Let's be honest, our routes are changing every single day, every single week, every month, every year for sure. And there's sometimes when we need to cancel customers because we don't offer route uh, work over in those routes anymore. Now, I'm gonna give you a couple tips on how to professionally cancel a customer. It's not really that hard to do. Uh, we never want to do that, but sometimes it just doesn't make sense and it doesn't add up to keep those customers. And another big tip, is routes. Sometimes our routes are shrinking or changing. And we don't offer service for those guys anymore. Number five, and you guys might already know where this one's going, but hey, sometimes customers are just crazy. Now, again, my channel is all about helping contractors grow a successful business. So if you're a homeowner, forgive me, but I've got to be honest with you guys. Sometimes 
the expectation level, the requests, the this, that, the phone calls, the badgering, the conversations. Look, sometimes we just gotta cancel customers. Sometimes customers that you know you sign up were doing their own property for five, 10, 15 years, and then they uh, you know relinquish the reins of it. And I always have those conversations with folks. Hey, we're gonna do a really good job. I take a lot of pride in what I do. But here's what I will also say. I'm a contractor. I'm only gonna be on your property for 20, 30 minutes a week to maintain your lawn and take care of it. I'm gonna get it to an A as a contractor, but I'm not gonna be able to give you that A plus work that you can do as a homeowner spending two and three hours a day on your property once a week, right? It's just unrealistic. Sometimes customers have those expectations and you just can't keep up with that. And frankly, you gotta let them go. But then there's also the crazy customers. There are some crazy, crazy people out there in America. In fact, I have a good video. I'll try to leave a card here. It was an older video I did about two years ago where a customer literally went nuclear on us and that was just ridiculous. This lady was screaming all kinds of profanity, all kinds of nasty stuff at me and I was like, uh, lady, I did your lawn. I just was here to cut the property and take care of it. Her husband got involved. It was super nasty. One of those kind of, uh, type of situations you never want to have happen. That happens every few uh, three or four years. But sometimes you have crazy bat, you know what, customers, and you got to let them go. Those are four or five tips that I was talking to you guys about, about why you might want to cancel a customer. Now, here's the deal. I always try to salvage a customer anytime I can. Pricing, expectations, scope of work, uh, the, the route that we're doing it. But things change, things change, customers change, relationships change, and that's okay. Two quick tips and we'll wrap this guy up. Number one, always be honest and always be respectful. What do I mean? Just shoot your customers straight. Business is business. Don't try to mix emotion or relationships with business. Sometimes those lines blur, I get it, I'm friends with my customers too. But you know what? If you have to raise your price five or $10 a week and they're not willing to pay it, don't make it personal. Just say, hey, you know what? I'm not gonna be able to take care of your property. Be honest, be respectful. You know, here's the deal. Think long term. You're still gonna see these people around town and whether you keep them as a customer or they keep you as a client or, or a contractor, listen, it's no here or there. You're gonna be in the area for five, 10, 20, 30 years. Think long term. Number two, if you do have to cancel someone outside of about being honest and respectful, try to give a referral, right? Let's be honest, there's tons and tons of work out there. There's few contractors uh, to go around, but sometimes there's new contractors that we can feed work off to. If you can ever provide, provide one of your customers a referral, if you can no longer, um, you know, for some reason those expectations aren't met on either side and you don't wanna deal with them anymore, pass them along to another contractor, somebody more than likely would be willing to take them off of your hands. All right guys, if you watch this far in, I'm gonna give you guys a couple bonus tips really quick. These are things that I cancel customers over and for if all the other criteria aren't met or something else is going on. Number one is belittling. If customers belittle, they're out of here. Number two, if they're demanding, if they're excessively demanding, they're out of here. If they're rude, if they're short, or if they swear, those customers are instantly out of here as well. If they start playing the pricing game, I've got a, uh, another contractor that will do it for X, Y, and Z, or I have a, somebody else that I used to do for you know $20 or $25. Those customers are instantly out of there. I don't even have those conversations. They're already not the kind of customers I'm looking for because they're price point driven and I want relationships with customers that I can build as clients, not just customers. I want a long-term relationship, not somebody that's gonna try to nickel and dime me on price. The last one is constantly bothering you. If customers are shooting you text messages at 6 a.m. or 9 p.m. Or on Sundays. Look, keep those boundaries, keep those uh, barriers, and keep your business life separate from your professional life. I'm not saying don't have good customer service, but if customers are belittling you, demanding from you, or calling you at 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. on a Sunday, probably not the ideal customer for you. Their expectations are a little bit off. You might have to have those conversations and readjust. And it, by the way, it works both ways, but you know what? All things being said, make sure that you have these healthy relationships and boundaries in place. And that's what's gonna help you identify the best customers for your business. All right, guys, hopefully these tips kind of help you guys out. This one goes out to Michael G. He had asked the question, what do I do about customers that I wanna cancel? Hey. It's business, it's okay to cancel customers. Again, one of the mistakes that I made, and le again, let me know in the comments down below if you've ever done this, is I thought I wanted every single customer. I thought that every single person needed to be a client of Brian's Law Maintenance, and I realized that is not the case. And it goes full circle because, I'll leave that card again here for that customer who went nuclear on us, definitely not a customer that I was looking to have long term, right? All right guys, what's some tips that you guys have? Leave me some comments down below. Have you guys ever taken on customers that you shouldn't have or knew that you should have dropped but didn't drop them soon enough? Leave me some comments down below. Let me hear your guys' thoughts and your guys' opinions, and we'll catch up with you guys on the next video.